traditional product launch, um, you place your order, cash goes out the door, you are holding that risk, whether this sells or not. Um, and, uh, you know, through this model, you kind of transfer risk and you're, and you also can kind of like kick the tires on, is this a good idea or not? If your Kickstarter campaign doesn't take off, well, maybe it's not a good idea. Uh, maybe only you think it's a good idea. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so, um, and yeah, so you're building an audience before. And, you know, when you look at, you know, fulfillment fees on Amazon in particular, we always bank on about a third of our, and now some of that's fulfillment, but about a third of our fees or excuse me, a third of our, our purchase price is Amazon fees. And so the 8%, um, that, that seems reasonable, reasonable for, for what they're doing. So um, anyway, so let's talk about um, the types of products. And, and I, the first time I heard about crowdfunding, I'm a beekeeper and I love beekeeping. And the fans of this show are probably sick of me talking about beekeeping, but here we go again. Um, so traditionally to harvest honey, you need to go into the beehives. You need to take out the frames and bring them back somewhere. And then you take a really hot knife and you cut off some wax and then you put it in this giant drum and you spin it around and that's how you get your honey. It's very labor intensive. Um, the bees get very pissed off when you do that and, uh, it's messy. I mean, honey gets everywhere. Uh, most beekeepers have like a honey room. That's just a room that's sticky. And, uh, and so the first time I heard about this was a product called the flow hive, which is think of like a, a beer tap that sits on the back of a hive. You don't need to bother your bees. You simply walk up to the back of your beehive, pull a handle and honey comes out like it's on tap brilliant. And, uh, you know, I, we hear a lot of our audience members say like, I want to start a company, but I don't have an idea or an invention. And, you know, when I hear that, I, I often think that, you know, most companies that launch on Amazon don't have a patent. They don't have a unique idea. Um, they're just taking, uh, you know, making improvements on something that's existing uh, mm -hmm. and selling it. And I'll, I'll use an example. Uh, I've got a hydro flask here. It's a great water bottle. Hydro flask did not invent water bottles. They just came out with a really solid product. People like it and people buy it. And so um, when we're talking about like market fit for products, mm -hmm. is this more on the inventive, new, innovative uh, type of product side of things or or kind of in contrast, the uh, improvements to an existing type of product? Yeah, that's a great question. I think when Kickstarter originally started, this platform was more for like really cool, like, I mean, there's a lot of really cool, interesting products that uh, I think Oculus launched on Kickstarter, uh, Pebble Watch, uh, if you remember that one, um, all these interesting products that were actually at the time, like super innovative. And they launched on Kickstarter as kind of this, um, this, this platform where they really needed that funding. So, uh, that's how it originally started. So I can see a lot of people having that um, that perception that Kickstarter is about innovative products. Nowadays, really just anything goes. I mean, lots of improvements on existing products, lots of repositioning of existing products um, that are that are useful for another niche, but presented and modified a little bit for a different niche, things like that. Uh, all those types of categories work. So to give you some examples, uh, I mean, when I first started on Amazon, I was looking for categories to sell in. So um, I know the kitchen category really, really well, and I know the travel category well, really well. I know I've seen dozens and dozens of uh, travel products that have launched on Kickstarter, like travel packing cubes or um, like luggage organizers and things like that, that were just like very, very standard categories in Amazon. Um, when they launched and they did a good job of presenting it, they've done really well on Kickstarter. In the kitchen category, um, I've seen like, um, I mean, this is not a cocktail shaker, but cocktail shakers, that was one of the categories I was interested in. Um, just like a nice looking cocktail shaker has done like, I remember like 470,000 on Kickstarter when they first launched. Um, lots, I mean, you, there's both, but I would say like when it comes to products that are launching nowadays, over 90 to 95% of them fall into the category of um, just like improvements, like as you, as you, um, as you called it. Uh, where it's completely innovative and completely brand new things like that beekeeping idea or the the beer or the the, the bee pump i guess <laughs> yeah, yeah the flow hive yep yep the, the flow, flow hive, hive. <laughs> yep cool uh that is probably something that's maybe never existed before so that would probably account for like less than five percent of the projects that, that are launched nowadays very so. interesting very interesting i think that that's um 
that is something that holds a lot of people back uh, from starting a business is I don't have an idea. And, um, you know, if I look at the categories of products that we sell, uh, we don't have a single patent on any of them. Um, we, we have taken existing ideas and, and made improvements on them. And, and if somebody's interested in this, what would you say a good step one is? Well, a step one is to, it's to understand why you're, you want, would be interested in this. So there's different objectives for people wanting to come and explore crowdfunding. Often it's because they don't have enough cash. So like the, the objective might be to uh, get, get some funding so that they can put, place their first order. Or maybe they already have a successful business with dozens of products launched or a few products launched, and now they're ready to take their brand to the next level. And they want to use this as a way to, um, to, to build fans and build a community and build a list so that they can start scaling this brand more effectively. Uh, maybe it's about cash flow. Maybe they want to, they want to explore this as a different tool to, to allow them to improve their, um, their cash and their cash flow situation so that they can scale their business faster um, in, in the way that we discussed earlier. But really understanding why they're going to get into this is really going to shape kind of how they can take advantage of this model because there's many different things that you can, many different goals that you can have when you're going into this. So the first is to understand what it is that pre-orders can do for you. What is it that you want to benefit from when it comes to exploring this model for yourself? And so can you talk about Live My Playground and some of the services you offer? Yeah, so Live My Playground uh, is, is our website, livemyplayground.com, but uh, we, we call ourselves Playground Theory. All, all of our campaigns are launches and um, really we've raised over $7 million in successful launches. So these are launches, these are not like e-commerce performances afterwards, it's just like the launches themselves. So we've taken that, we've incorporated this into our Launch Accelerated Blueprint Lab program. 